my objectives as I set out today was to not only find the youthful voice of the British Ghanaian, but the voice of those that are striving for success. I think spoken word artist Michael Kwetia and light heavyweight international boxer Joshua Boachi are perfect examples of that. Michael had a lot of appreciation for his Ghanaian heritage, although, by his own admission, explained that this appreciation had not always been the case. Michael further commented on some Ghanaian parents using being sent home to Ghana as a deterrent, a kind of parenting method, which in such cases can contribute to the young British-born Ghanaian developing a negative perception of their heritage. Joshua, who can speak his native tongue, again also showed that he was connected to his Ghanaian heritage. And in his own words... That's where I'm from and I'll never forget that. However, he did not have an immediate desire to return permanently to Ghana, having left age nine. This is understandable, especially as his focus is on his boxing career, and in particular, Rio 2016. Therefore, any attempt in a career in boxing in Ghana would be hard as the boxing industry there has not yet attained a certain level. More experienced voices were the Fletchers, whose Ghanaian language school is inspirational. And although, of course, like any other business, there is a financial invested interest, off the back of that, the service that they provide is a priceless one. I mean, what cost can we really put on maintaining our cultural identity? In the small discussion, there were some hard pills to swallow. To be brutally honest, it was a bit difficult especially in primary school where I was the only guy, I was the only African in my year. I don't know, I've lived in London all my life and I've never heard of anyone from Ghana or anyone who's situated in the UK saying, OK, come back and do this for the country so you can invest back into the economy. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard of it. It's not on TV, it's not on radio. I haven't heard any, it's not even on social media, so... They come here and, and then they say all these things, but they don't have, a, they don't have that passion to drive. Be visible. Yeah know how we can contact you, and when we call you, don't just ignore the phone. Do you know what I mean? Ignore our emails. <laughs> do you know what I mean? These are people that are trying to make a change. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If, if, we, and, you know, if we're not going to do it, who else is going to do it for us? As I watched through the lens of my camera, I really identified with their shared, not so great experiences of how it felt being of Ghanaian heritage and growing up in Britain in the 80s and 90s. The once felt feeling of embarrassment to be connected to Ghana, to Africa, because of the social influences of the time the loud echo from within the home, to connect with Ghana, relocate and go on to implement the skills, knowledge and experiences acquired in Britain. Struggle to find that same intensity outside the parameters of where that home-grown concept took root. I smile, however, as I witness change, as all these young adults are dying to yeah. come back. Mm -hmm. you know I mean? We must take note that they are frustrated frustrated with the lack of information that will enable them to take up opportunities in Ghana. What was interesting was for the first time since my interview with Mr. Bruno, I started to feel an increment energy. Not to its full potential, but it was there in the room. That sense of pride, determination, belief, that want or even need to find, to take, to own, to take complete ownership and contribute to the Ghanaian identity.